Hey guys, it's Maddie. Today we are here with yet another brand new series for you folks, Trucks of War. In this series, we will be guiding you through the guts and gore of the wartime warriors that helped drive the U.S. military and mold the modern day model of truck manufacturing. Starting us off is the biggest, baddest, bloodiest war of all, World War II. Let's jump right in. From late 1939 through the end of 1945, the world was in a very volatile place as it experienced a war like never before. Spanning over the course of six years and six continents, the savage slaughter of the Second World War was one of the most serious struggles the United States has ever suffered. In order to sustain the safety of our nation, our military service stood in need of some serious support which would come in the form of various heavy-duty vehicles and tactical trucks. During the early years of the war, the U.S. Army Ordnance Corps had started developing a complete line of rugged rigs that could operate off-road in all types of weather. However, due to the extenuating wartime circumstances, the Ordnance Corps needed all the help they could get in expediting this process and encouraged many manufacturers during the time to join in the making of military materials. Many of these new models and materials manifested in 1941, including a multitude of military-grade 4x4 and 6x6 trucks in different tonnages. Although we obviously will be unable to cover each and every make and model used, we have compiled a cohesive catalog including quite a few of the most cherished cult classic combat vehicles from the quintessential American conflict, World War II. Perhaps most notable of all, World War II saw the creation of one of America's most valued vehicles ever, the Jeep. Despite now being primarily produced for consumer use, the Jeep was once a beloved, lightweight military workhorse modeled to move troops and much more. This quarter-ton 4x4 truck traveled tough terrain with ease and quickly became the leading light-wheeled transport vehicle of the U.S. military, with President Eisenhower later referring to them as one of the three decisive weapons the United States had during the war. Due to the overwhelming success of the Jeep, the United States military encouraged both Willys Overland Motors and Ford Motors Company to build the models for them. These wagons were known as the Willys MB Quad and the Ford GPW Pygmy and served as the world's first mass-produced four-wheel drive car. Speaking of mass production, a grand total of nearly 650,000 of these so-called Jeeps were built, with the more popular Willys wagon constituting well over half of the weight with almost 360,000 units. Although acclaimed as the almighty alpha truck for the armed forces, prior to the jaw-dropping Jeeps, Dodge developed their first all-military designed truck with their half-ton WC series models, which made its debut as the U.S. Army's first standard light truck. This WC model line was also extended to three-quarter ton and one and a half ton trucks, with Dodge serving as the Army's sole producer of three-quarter trucks throughout the war. A total of over 255,000 of these WC series trucks were built across all variants, including weapons carriers, ambulances, and radio command reconnaissance vehicles. GMC also played a paramount part in the Second World War as a primary provider of two and a half ton 6x6 trucks with none other than their celebrated CCKW cargo carrier truck. Of the almost 2.5 million total trucks bought by the U.S. military during the Second World War, over a third of them were 2.5 ton models, with more than 70% of those being built by GMC as some version of the CCKW. These Jimmy Deuce and a Half trucks came in several variants, including an open or closed cab, long or short wheelbase, and even in a unique amphibious option as the DUKW. The DUKW, better known as the Duck, was modeled after its cousin CCKW truck with the addition of a watertight hull and a propeller. The Duck added to its versatility as an amphibious vehicle by also being the first truck to allow the driver to vary the tire pressure from inside the cab. 
This feature would prove exceedingly beneficial for both hard surfaces such as roads, as well as softer surfaces like sand. This ability to instantly adapt tires would serve the military well during the D-Day invasion on the beaches of Normandy. Additionally, all of these standardized heavy service GMC cargo haulers would go on to form the backbone of the famed Red Ball Express convoy system that supplied Allied forces moving quickly through Europe after the events of D-Day. GMC's sister company, Chevrolet, also manufactured many models for the U.S. military and its allies. Most popularly, the one and a half ton 4x4 G506 trucks, also known as the Chevy G4100 and G7100 models, were produced in mass quantities and eventually became the standard one and a half ton 4x4 trucks for the U.S. Army. However, Several of these trucks were shipped overseas to supply the Soviet Union as part of the Lend-Lease program. This Lend-Lease program also saw large numbers of the Studebaker US-6 2.5-ton 6x6 trucks supplied to the Soviets. A total of roughly 220,000 trucks in 13 variations were built, and they became affectionately referred to as the Studer by Soviet troops. These Studers were even specially recognized for their superb service in the Soviet war efforts by none other than Joseph Stalin himself, who went as far as to send a personalized letter of appreciation to the Studebaker company. Strikingly similar to the sensationalized Studebaker semis were the identically built REO US-6s, which came without the front-mounted winch and were more specifically referred to as the US-6 U9 models. Both Studebaker and REO US-6 models were renowned for their overall ruggedness and reliability, as well as their unprecedented ability to run on even the poorest quality of fuels. Also during this time, a new family of heavy-duty 6-ton, 6x6 tactical, all-terrain trucks were being assembled by an assortment of manufacturers in seven different body types. Perhaps the most prominent of these would be the Brockway B666, with almost 220,000 of these built. Mack also had their noteworthy NM 6-ton, 6x6 prime mover cargo truck, which was Mack's first military 6x6 model. In addition to their 6-ton, 6x6 NM models, Mack also built the bigger and badder 7.5 ton 6x6 NO prime mover cargo trucks. The Mack NO model was built in seven variants throughout its production, but was largely used as either an artillery tractor or a salvage vehicle. Additionally, there were a couple companies creating slightly smaller 4 ton 6x6 trucks, with Diamond T's model 968 being the most popular with over 30,000 produced. Autocar's model U8144T was also being developed for and primarily deployed by the U.S. Army as the largest, most heavy-duty 4x4 truck in World War II. These cab over engine designed models were built in 5 to 6 ton capacities and became the Army's standard pontoon tractor, specialized for towing bridging equipment. 10 ton 6x6 heavy wrecking M1 trucks were made by manufacturers Kenworth and Ward La France, who in total contracted a total of close to 5,800 of these big rigs. In addition to the wrecker body style, all M1 trucks came equipped with a 20,000 pound front winch, a rear winch, heavier bumpers, and a big front tow bar, which allowed the M1s to recover and move lighter vehicles with ease. Titanic tractors called tank transporters were built as some of the biggest, baddest trucks in both 6x4 and 6x6 12 ton capacities. The Diamond T Model 980 and the Pacific M26 Dragon Wagon were among two of the toughest 12-ton tractors of the time and proved capable in the transport of even the most tasking tanks in the service. Despite the muscle of the massive M26, it simply could not muster the might of the 70-ton T29 and 95-ton T28 tanks. Sterling trucks took this strength a step further with their 8x8 12-ton T26 truck. Designed to take over Pacific's powerful Dragon Wagon, this eight-man cargo cab forward truck 
saw little action as the war ended before they could be shipped over to Europe. As the Second World War officially came to a close in September of 1945, the production of the above-mentioned military models also concluded. Regardless of the retirement of these rigorous rides, the rugged reputation of these rigs still remains as a relic of our nation's roots. Additionally, these fierce, fighting freight haulers would pave the way for further advancements in truck technology that would continue to benefit our nation to this day. Thank you all so much for watching our brand new Trucks of War series featuring the trucks of World War II. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We are growing rapidly and quickly approaching our next goal of 20,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Dave and Maddie as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We still have our truck history shirts available on our website at jackschromeshow.com, so please be sure to check them out. If you're in the mood for some Chrome, Drop by our online Chrome shop at jackschromeshop.com and save on your order by using the discount code YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. <laughs>